hello everybody and thanks for for having us uh, and we will do this presentation in two steps so i will take the first one uh, and and karin will manage the presentation so i will ask her to change slides and, and you can do that now karin uh, so, so we are uh, stefan and karin uh, i'm the ceo of of the group and i also a researcher in human computer interaction and i work a lot with uh, cognitive accessibility and, and Karin is one of our project managers at, at Begripsam, currently working a lot with subtitling and, and accessible uh, video content. Uh, yeah, next slide Karin. And, and only to just a short thing about us in Begripsam, we work as, uh, we have sort of three different uh, legs, you can say, and we, we are a consultancy organization we are working with activism to change society in, in a more accessible direction and we also do research so we have currently we are funding two phd students and, and we are engaged in different research projects yeah next slide uh, so the first part of the presentation is about the understandable tech text project and and, and methods that we have worked within that project to, to sort of dig deeper into uh, readability and understandability and, and how people who themselves experience uh, reading impairments find uh, what they find the most important things to think about when, when producing texts. Uh, and, and the second phase will, will be about uh, accessible subtitling. Yeah. And, and we actually we have the same challenges in both cases, I think. Uh, it's about simplification without losing information so you have you have a lot of information that that is supposed to be presented in in a sort of an easy and understandable way but you don't want to lose any information along along the way uh, so often the problem of also is that something that is is very long and complicated should be presented short still without losing information uh, and and, you, and if you move into the video area, you also have a limited time frame. And in both cases, you have might have a text that has sort of a limited space, uh, or people have limited time and space to to comprehend uh, co content. So what we're struggling with is is this dilemma, and I think you have touched upon that many times this this day. Is it? Is it possible to do a, a version that that sort of works for everybody, or should we should we go for different versions and adapt uh, adapt uh, text and or, or content for different needs? So basically, a sort of a tension between a universal design approach or or sort of a separate version approach. Uh, yeah, next slide, Connor. And next, this is about the. The understandable text project and, and in that project we worked uh, a core group of 15 participants with different kind of, of reading impairments uh, and, and, and then a hundred of persons with reading impairments was engaged at some times during this three-year project and then we did a survey with, uh, with over 500 uh, participants with reading impairments uh, and, and, and sort of the starting point for all this was, was that many of them found the public information or, or news media texts too difficult. Uh, we have worked in Sweden with sort of easy to read and an and, and easy language project for many time and, and, and actually the government agencies are obliged to present their information in, in an understandable way. We have a special law on that. Nevertheless, people find the information really difficult to understand. Uh, so, so so this one starting point we had that the producers of the information they might believe that they are producing text uh, of good quality and, and easy to understand and, and, and comprehend uh, but but our analysis was that they are actually the problem they are producing text that people don't understand so we think working together joining experts people with the reading impairments and the producers uh, sound like a good idea and that that's sort of what we have done in the project. So next slide. Uh, and we have, we have just a lot of different methods and, and we started by 
reading with eye tracker technology just to sensitize ourselves of how, how actually how different people read. And, and we could see clearly uh, when we analyze that material that, that people with reading impairments read different than, than people who don't experience that kind of, of uh, difficulties. We did a lot of interviews and group discussions and we started to co-create and co-design accessible texts. And, and, and as a parallel process, we started to produce requirement. What was actually the thing that those people with reading impairments found the most sort of useful solutions for creating accessible text. Uh, and then we tested this and, and, and also developed methods to work together with text producers and, and make them sort of more aware of what, when did they cause trouble and what was that in their sort of producing of text that caused troubles. And, and at that point, we also realized that we have to work together also with designers because the, it's a mixed responsibility of the producer and the designer of the content. The, sort of that those things are interrelated when it comes to how, how understandable the, the result will be. Uh, and then we ended the project with some, some nice videos and we have links to those. They, they have subtitles in, in English and Italian if you want to just to listen and, and watch the videos afterwards. Yeah, next slide. And we identified 19 requirements and, and you can see them, see them in this slide. It, it's, uh, I, I think the, you can get the presentation after if you want to dig deeper in the data, but we identified 19 uh, sort of important requirements so that was derived from what the people with reading difficulties said. Uh, and then we ranked them in, in different kind of voting system so, so we sort of could could see that the most important thing from from this group of people was that there is a header on the text describing the content that, and, and if possible information should be should be sorted by bullet lists and the text should be short and, and many of those are, are sort of known from from other research I think uh, some are not that often described in, in literature perhaps but but these were the most, most important uh, by the 19, uh, 19 most important requirements that we identified. Uh, and then we could divide it to see if there is there sort of a consensus. Do, does the kind of reading impairment or reading difficulty uh, make a difference how people rank uh, and, and sort of prioritize by, by those requirements? So we can take next slide, Karin. These are the results from, from a survey of, 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 I think it was 500 participants. And, uh, and here you can see the result sorted after diagnosis. And then you can see that, that, that there is sort of, sort of consensus about in many groups, but they, they sort of prioritize quite, or a bit different, I would say. Uh, so, so for example, we have two groups that that they placed the text to speech function as the most important. That, that was people with dys dyslexia and, and intellectual disability. Uh, so, so for them, headers were important, but not the most important. They, they rather preferred to listen to, to text than, than read it. So they ranked the text to speech function higher. Uh, and, and you can dig deeper into this data as well if you want to compare uh, different groups with each other. So this was a sort sorting according to diagnosis. And next slide, uh, Karin, is the, so that the same data sorted after the impairment that participants had said they had. Uh, and, you, and you can also here see that, 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 for example, people with memory difficulties, they also wanted the text-to-speech function on, on for the information. So they also wanted to listen. Uh, but overall, we can see that there is sort of a consensus what is what is important and, and our sort of conclusion here that is that, that uh, if you follow this kind of guidelines or other heuristic guidelines as a text producer, then the result will be a more readable and, and understandable text. But also that uh, it's important to do that together with the people having the reading problems because we, uh, we asked text producers to, to come to us and have workshops and, and to bring 
the best examples they, that they could bring from their own sort of uh, from their own field. So, so a text that they sort of perceived being very, very readable and understandable. Uh, and, and then we did a workshop with people with reading impairments criticizing that text. Uh, and the result always was that they they went from the workshop with a complete different version of their text. Uh, so we did rewriting during the workshop and, and we did also a voting. Uh, so, so we had, uh, we did evaluate the, both the text in the beginning and the text in the end. Uh, with red, uh, yellow and green cards uh, and, and compared it to the requirements identified. So, so there was, there could be a lot of red in the beginning of the workshop and then they ended with the more green uh, or yellow text in, in the end. So, so despite that they thought that they had made a lot of effort to make the, the text really, really good, uh, the, the people with reading problems could always identify possible sort of improvements. Uh, yeah, you can change slide there. Go on. Uh, and my last slide is, these are the, are the links. We, we, did, uh, we did a lot of uh, sort of uh, informative and, and also fun videos about reading reading difficulty. So, so the idea is that one person with a reading difficulty meet a producer of text and rearrange, rearrange the text live on, 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 sort of on, the, on the screen. And then you can listen to what the reflections from both parties on, on, on that discussion. Uh, and, and, and those have been really used in, in a lot of, lot of contexts in Sweden after the project. So they are sort of having a life on their own after the project has ended. Yeah, uh, I think that was my part of the presentation. Okay, then we move on to accessible subtitles. And this initiative build on what Stefan just has talked about and the understandable text project. And uh, we are experimenting with a mainstream approach to more accessible subtitles. So the starting point is uh, a number of questions and this is just the beginning of this work. Uh, so can we, find a format that is generally accepted by the vast majority and those who struggle? And is it possible to concentrate the language into shorter subtitles displayed for a longer time? And is it possible to edit the language without losing the essence? Uh, because this is really a struggle in terms of um, making the subtitles both shorter and displayed longer. Um, and this is not uh, easy to read, just to separate from that. So a quick glance at the, the format um, as we see it now. And it's um, 32 characters um, per line. And there are two reasons for it. Uh, one reason is that W3C recommends 32 characters per line uh, for accessible subtitles. And the second reason is that uh, Facebook has um, a limit of 32 characters. So if you ex exceed that, uh, there will automatically be a, an, an, another line. Um, and then we have 10 characters per second or max 12. And the reason for that is that it's uh, significantly slower and it's an easy number to remember. So that's why it's it's 10. Um, so I will present this um, format a bit now and it will be very brief, uh, but there will be additional material for those interested to look into afterwards. So this is a picture, um, just it's an example from a subtitling editor. Uh, you don't need to read everything on the screen. Uh, what I want to show with this picture is the, uh, you see the time axis and uh, the subtitles are like sausages on the timeline. And as you can see, they are sort of um, next to each other. Uh, and that's a consequence of making these subtitles shorter, but still longer in time. Um, so what I do is that I let this, the uh, subtitle 
continue after the speech has ended. And if that's not enough time, then I started before the speech begun. But also trying to take into consideration the logical time in the video. So for example, uh, the change of um, slides. I don't let the talk from one slide continue on, the, on a second slide in a presentation like this. So text editing dilemmas. So it's about staying true to what is said and the essence of it. Uh, so breaking lines at logical points, um, and this can be a challenge. Uh, so it's not always consistent, um, but there's a high demand on lines that are broken in, in between two blocks. So two lines and then the next two lines. Those need to be very uh, logical. Um, one sentence per block or line. Exception is one per two blocks. Um, use the same words. Uh, so only change words in exception. That's an exception. And that is if there's room for, I need the space to make it short. And some words are very long. Uh, so then you need to short, maybe change it to a shorter word to sort of to get it to fit in. Uh, and follow the word order. And this can be a challenge because if you speak in an um, inverted word order, that is that you use the verb and then the subject, then the sentence is often very long. And then it's much more difficult to shorten the sentence. Whereas if you speak in a normal word order, subject and then verb, it's much easier to make it short. Um, but so the aim is to not change too much, uh, only change if, if it's really needed. Uh, and as you can see, this is not always possible. So it is a dilemma of sort of how to juggle this. So this is um, an example of what it can look like. Um, as you can see, uh, the number of um, blocks are fewer. Uh, the subtitles, the blocks are um, more narrow. There are fewer characters. And um, also, yeah, uh, but many of the words are the same, but trying to, so it's actually a, a question of sort of trying to condense the language, uh, keep it as much as the original, but trying to condense it rather than simplifying it. And factors that facilitate more accessible subtitles is if you speak slowly uh, and if you use pauses, because that gives you the room to um, play around with the subtitles and normal word order uh, also facilitates. However, these three points are quite difficult because when we speak normally, we, we don't speak slowly. Uh, we don't use pauses naturally, many of us. And many of us do not speak in a normal word order or we tend to speak um, in unfinished long sentences. Um, so uh, if you're interested, we provide uh, two examples. So it's a short video with Helena Taubner. Uh, she presents her um, science and she, It's very easy to subtitle. Uh, her presentation is a textbook example. Uh, you can tell it is very well prepared. Uh, I have more or less written everything she has said. Um, so this is, this is an ex extreme on one hand. And then um, I have Stefan on the other end, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, is, uh, which talks more like people do. Um, it, it is, um, I mean, he speaks from a presentation um, on top of his mind. Uh, and that is, a more, that is more of a challenge to subtitle uh, because it, he speaks freely, quite fast and with an inverted word order with long and unfinished sentences. So then 
you, you need to sort of work a little bit more um, with the subtitles. Um, so for those who are interested, um, there, there is some additional material here and you can then upload it into a subtitle editor. Uh, you have the SRT file, so you can look at what it looks like and play around. And um, if you have any questions after uh, this, um, please feel free to contact me and Stefan. And remember, I'm the bad example here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so conclusions then. Uh, so just to wrap this up, we, we, we have this uh, sort of uh, tension between a mainstream approach or, or adapted ver versions. Uh, we have the production process that could sort of maybe we need to change that. And, and we have the technical tools that could be could be improved. So there is a lot of a lot of further research needed on this uh, on this field to sort of improve on this on this area and uh, and how however on however you are doing it do it together with the people that have reading impairments I and i don't have to say that to you attending here today because you know that uh, so so thank you for listening thank you very much Stefan, Karin, it was a very interesting presentation that you have done because you have the point, the perspective of uh, the, the users. Uh, you have taken into account what users need and the opinion and the, uh, the experience, the user experience, which is very important to bring the better solutions for accessibility. That's the point in which train to validate working. Uh, because we consider that it is very important the research, but always taking into account the real user needs. And that's a common point. And I think that it's very relevant what Stefan has said about how uh, people, the participants, uh, have, uh, cho uh, have, have chosen the different items in which they feel more comfortable for the, for the easy text. And Karin, you have brought a very relevant discussion about subtitling because uh, sometimes it's quite hard not only to follow the, uh, the subtitles, but also um, joining the, uh, the speed from the uh, image with the, uh, with the reading speed that people with difficulties have. So very interesting both, uh, both works, both presentations. Thank you very much for attending uh, this conference and for sharing your knowledge. Um, we will uh, share your presentation after you, after you have said, but if you want to do it now with the links of the video, you can share it the, directly in the chat so that our audience can check now uh, the, this, uh, these videos that you have shared with, uh, with us uh, in order to, to see how you have managed the subtitles. Thank you.